If you were to tell me in 2015 that four years from now, the developers at Dead Toast Entertainment, under the publisher Devolver Digital, which has made games such as the Serious Sam series, Hotline Miami, and Enter the Gungeon, would release a game that's basically similar to the parkour heavy Vector, one that I already loved on the phone, that in turn was smashed together with a vibrant comic book-esque retro punk color scheme, a sense of strategy with how weapons are used, as well as your movement since you are equipped with slow motion on demand, a floating banana named Pedro that does most of the talking and sounds like a village from Animal Crossing, and that I would literally giggle like a child while playing this game, I'd probably tell you to go away because I was too busy playing custom maps on Halo Reach with friends that I no longer talk to. While side scrollers don't normally pique my interest for the most part, the electronic backbeat of the trailer, mixed with incredibly smooth stunts and bullets flying everywhere, made me realize that this would be an experience that I would look forward to for an entire year. Which meant no release date for the longest of time as Dead Toast Entertainment continued to tease this game for about three years. When it finally came time to experience it, the anticipation matched, if not exceeded, my initial perspective on the game from the trailers, which is the consensus of most players that had the chance to discover this game. Rightfully so, when the elements used to keep the game from reaching boredom, techniques of the character, atmospheric soundtrack that complements the events, and five districts that each introduce a new feature of gameplay, making the overarching wonder of the player's participation unforgettable. Touching on the unforgettable, every single time this game starts to feel like it's becoming slightly mundane, a new element is established to keep it fresh, preventing it from becoming stale since the core gameplay really doesn't change all that much. It paces the incorporation of the new elements in a relatively natural manner, where once you get used to how a level feels, those lessons you've subconsciously learned prepare you for the little changes. These differences are the variations of enemies depending on progression, and that over your span of a playthrough, it becomes more clear that a level of strategy is necessary, especially with the levels where you have to move blocks in a specific pattern in order to progress further. A puzzle, if you will. Any and all of these can be classified under the term anti-boredom, which means that it puts you in a state of engagement and absorbance, instead of feeling uninterested due to the lack of variety. It's the amount of little things in the game that hold you tight with attentiveness, such as saving your sick tricks in the form of multiple graphic interchange formats so you can brag about it on Twitter and how cool you are. Whoa, man, look at me. I'm cooler than you, because I bought this game and you didn't. The constant fluid movement of your character, especially when you jump off a ledge and shoot on both sides of you, which is really cool. The fact that your pistols have infinite ammo means you're less likely to die by bad guys, but more likely to die by lead poisoning. And the fact that there is a level difficulty bonus, which means that you sometimes can't get the highest rank on a level unless you beat it on a higher difficulty, which gives the game more of a replayable value. And being replayable definitely invests you past finishing the game. While that is a nice factor, when playing for the first time, there are two distinguishing ways to play. Using slow motion as the first avenue, it's easier to be strategic with your movement by use of parkour and maneuvering bullets. Avenue 2 encases fast-packed action in a run-and-gun style, which gives the game a different feel. To test out how a level would be if one didn't use slow motion, to investigate which style of gameplay would be better, especially when speedrunning the game. Without tapping shift, one would realize that there's less bullet strategy involved, and when you spin, it's easier to dodge, but harder to aim. So although it may be fun to see how fast you can finish a level, even though for some reason on the leaderboard it's always some impossible score made by some Japanese person, what's contained in the journey is what makes it enjoyable. And in fact, the longer you play a level, the more enjoyment you tend to get out of it. Because half the time you're doing cool shooting tricks in slow motion, which never gets old. I mean, there's a reason why the slow-mo guys are so popular. Now, during the journey of a level, there are many incorporations both with the character and items that spice up the quality of your techniques. Character-wise, you have the ability of doing flips in slow motion, shooting over things without standing, which is something that more games don't have the feature of, so it's nice that this game incorporates a nice in between. Between. Shooting on both sides of you combined with spinning makes you basically feel invincible. And kicking abilities to launch numerous projectiles at your enemies. An array of knives, skateboards, and frying pans can be found across multiple levels. All of which you can kick! Knives are only used as a projectile but are very deadly. Skateboards are super fast and give you the option to do cool tricks that are only possible with that item. And frying pans where bullets can ricochet off of it targeting the enemies directly. Throughout your trek as an acrobatic mercenary, you are accompanied by a two-hour-long soundtrack. 
Yes, I am also surprised that it is two hours long. At the same time, however, it's no surprise because the soundtrack sounds like one continuous string of a song, since it doesn't sway too much from the electronic vibe it puts out. It mostly consists of bass-heavy yet atmospheric techno beats that adds to the game but doesn't take away from the parkour combat, especially since the music slows down when you're in slow motion. Without the music native to the game, it feels hollow as if you lost a beating heart of energy. When the beating heart is active in the game's entirety, it's found in five districts. Although technicality leaves it to believe that the districts are actually considered chapters, a district is an area of a country or city. So since most of the gameplay takes place in a city, district sounds better.